the idea for writing Agile Performance Improvement really started when I first came into CA about three years ago. They hired me because I have um, a reasonable degree of expertise around human performance technology in my role as an education and learning person. But suddenly I was thrust into a role where I was supporting the transformation of uh, thousands of engineers towards Agile software methodologies. And at the same time, I was expected to practice Agile myself. Agile took over my life. Right, so I started studying Agile a lot. It got me to thinking about um, whether or not human performance technology and Agile, which are two um, systems driven by principles and values, were, were even compatible, or whether I would run into conflict by trying to practice both at the same time. Happily, they are uh, compatible, and the book teaches about how the, the two systems can work together to provide a more complete picture of how to improve human performance. There are really two audiences for the book. So one are the agile software engineers, and the other are human performance technology people, which could include uh, HR practitioners, learning and education people, and really anyone who produces non-software output. Agile performance improvement takes the best of human performance technology and blends it synergistically with the best of agile software engineering. So both of those systems have flaws and blind spots, and by combining the two, uh, those, those blind spots are remediated and you have one complete system where you can uh, focus on customers and deliver value consistently. That was actually one of the surprising things about how the book turned out is uh, there was a very non-agile practice of designing the entire book before I started writing it. Um, so that's, that's sort of a waterfall method. But surprisingly, um, it held up pretty well. And um, certain sections, I think, are, are targeted more towards people who don't know anything about Agile. So you learn the basics of Agile, and you, you learn some of the techniques that um, Agile software engineers use in order to produce higher quality output faster. And then there are other sections that are specifically for people who don't know anything about human performance technology and some of those practices. The overall structure of the book and the overall thesis of the book remained intact as I developed it. Um, one of the things that surprised me was I had to actually, after explaining what human performance technology is and some of those techniques and agile software development and some of those techniques, I had to actually figure out what defines agile performance improvement. So that was probably the most agonizing part of it, but as far as the audience profile, it remained the same. Well, I think that uh, um, people that work in large enterprise companies, um, both in my profession, which is education and software engineering, um, have some things to learn. Um, there's, there's a mindset change that has to happen within a lot of education people or anyone who works in a non-software area about the benefits of Agile. So large pre-planned projects that churn out things that nobody really cares about um, is not the way forward. So if you can um, apply Agile techniques and methods, you will produce things of value more quickly. You can inspect and adapt and move forward from there. In the Agile world, a lot of the thought leadership is uh, quite silent about how to actually prove that you're delivering value. There's all sorts of things written about um, you know, how to do agile ceremonies and what the roles are and even some of the technical practices. But I know that product owners in particular struggle with how to quantify the value of their output. And so agile performance improvement borrows from human performance technology and um, helps to do that. The big message of the book is about overcoming a pervasive work problem, which is failure to deliver value. So are you delivering things that your customers care about, and are you delivering them in a predictable and high quality way? Agile performance improvement uh, looks at the team as a system, so it has to do with the interactions among the customer, the product owner, and the development team. So it talks a lot about how do you create effective collaboration and flow among those three players in the system and how do you actually measure whether or not you're continuously improving the way that you work. The other thing to consider is in a large enterprise, um, how do you manage the inevitable disruption from outside forces? The story of the Agile Performance Improvement System is how do you uh, create and measure the impact of effective collaboration and flow while minimizing the impact of disruption from outside forces.
One of the things that's going on is I, I think that people that are looking to the future need to, to consider agile performance improvement. Um, there's an expectation, you know, in my business that the things that we produce are actually going to add value instead of just being a cost center. There's also an expectation that the things that, that we deliver are delivered in a high quality and predictable way, right? So if you can't do that and if you can't add quantifiable value to what your business is doing, they're not going to employ you anymore. They're not going to hire you. They're not going to use you. And you'll have to find a new line of work. So even though the, the, the topic can be a little dry and technical at times, I think when you read the book, you're going to find that it's pretty fun. I bring in examples from all walks of life. I have some anecdotes in there about um, coffee shops and skateboarding, sailboat racing, uh, home improvement, life around the house, kids playing Minecraft. So there are all sorts of anecdotes that, that bring together these concepts and show that, that agile and the techniques of human performance technology can be applied both at work and in all aspects of life. I think it's going to change the way that, that people work together at CA, particularly you know, in, a, in my use case, how education and engineering work together. So education people need to learn that um, everything that they, that they churn out has to have some business value associated with it. Um, there's no sense in being industrious, cranking out a bunch of crap that nobody cares about. And on the agile side, I think they need to consider things more holistically in terms of how do you improve human capabilities. So providing comprehensive uh, training resources to all of your employees is not going to make them perform better. So getting past behavior and into performance is something that everybody uh, needs to focus on more. I think it's an entertaining book.